if we look today, we have um, in first line setting, we have sorafenib actually, the only FDA approved drug still, but in the second line, we have nivolumab and regorafenib um, approved, and then already presented data with cabosatinib um, and lenbatinib, and now um, with the with the new trial that was uh, uh, with the ramisorumab that was presented this year, and all those you know they're get being reviewed for FDA approval, not yet approved, but a lot of uh, new drugs that we have um, available, um, and I think the uh, when we just see the response rates and how well our patients do on uh, immune therapy, it's very encouraging. Um, in the trial, which was FDA approved, um, the overall the median overall survival was 15 months, and um, we we just you know the, the looking at immune therapy in liver cancer. When we talk about liver cancer, it's very different from other cancers because we have to look at the cancer, but we also have to look at that these patients have poor liver function, they have liver disease also. So you have to balance these two things all the time. So with immune therapy, we actually can treat these patients better. You know, we don't need the liver. Um, you, the immune therapy can work even with the poor liver function. So that's very that's very encouraging, and and so that that's exciting with this with this type of immune therapy. Um, and the other thing we see is that patients who have hepatitis C, hepatitis B, um, they can they are eligible for immune therapy. And in this meeting, they did present. This is very early data few patients, but they presented data with uh, um, a PDL1 uh, inhibitor in combination with bevacizumab, so a VEGF uh, receptor an antagonist in combination with the immune therapy, and very encouraging data, uh, about a 60% response rate. Uh, we'll see how that pans out.